What's up, everybody? Jackson here. Today is my little brother, Chubbs. Hello, everyone. Today, we're going to be talking Overwatch 2 and just kind of our thoughts on it. Because I, I don't know about you, but I'm interested in it more so than I was Overwatch 1. Oh, yeah. Where it's going to have PvE content. Well, I mean, for me personally, it's not really my cup of tea, especially for 60 bucks. I am more interested in it. Like, the first one, I was not interested in it. Yeah. Really. But with Overwatch 2, I'm actually a little bit more interested in it. And not only that, but they're doing some shit where I'm like, oh, good. You're you're making some good moves over there with this. Yeah. And naturally, the audience is furious. Oh, yeah. Because nowadays, you can't fucking do anything without the internet being in an uproar over everything you've done oh yeah the people who are to blame for this are going to complain on it yeah and you know what <laughs> i find funny this is the vocal majority i think there's a quiet minority of players that play overwatch hardcore that are happy about this right because here's the thing about Overwatch, and I mean, we've been critical as fuck towards Overwatch. I mean, let's let's get out, that out in the open. Like, right now, I have a very low opinion of the game. Oh, yeah. I, it, it Just as it stands where it's been this game that's basically been a vehicle for these loot boxes that are, you know, super lucrative to Blizzard. So much so now that every game they come out with is having skins of some sort. Some sort of cosmetic microtransactions. We don't know if they're going to be like loot boxes in Diablo. We don't know if they're going to be loot boxes in Warcraft 3. I don't know. But they will have cosmetic yes, microtransactions. because the skin game is the rich man's game. And there's a reason that the, oh, that the StarCraft uh, Battlefield game got axed. Oh, yeah. And it got axed because Overwatch 2 is a thing that needs to happen because those skins have been super lucrative. What I'm curious about is have we seen the bubble of the, how much these skins can make is what I'm asking. Right. Because at a certain point, like, I'm sorry, th that's the thing. This is, this is a, let's, let's, it's a sequel, yes, but it's also a coordinated plan to reinvigorate the player base. Right. And get people buying skins again. And, and loot get boxes back again. into yes. it again, yeah. Because Overwatch's popularity has faded. And I think that the majority of players that are still playing Overwatch at this point in time, that still really enjoy it, the, the team comp, the PvP aspect of it, are looking at this new expansion and they're like, good. Because I don't know how you couldn't. When you've painstakingly, when you've spent hours and hours painstakingly unlocking this collection of skins in these RNG-based loot boxes, or received enough duplicates to finally fucking purchase one that you want with the credits they give you for duplicates out of the loot box when you've done that and you've not only that most of these hardcore overwatch players have spent money on these like microtransactions. like oh, let's yeah. just be real well let's be invested real. not just six yes <laughs> yes let's let's be real most of these overwatch players that are there every day after work every weekend playing it all night with their friends, those people have 100% spent money on the fucking loot boxes. And in my opinion, what Overwatch has done that they're getting slammed about is it, it's, it's, it's definitely an unconventional sequel, to say the least. But they're letting you carry over all of your skins and your collection from Overwatch 1 and... The PvP is going to be the same as the first one. Right, yeah. So you're going to have the same mode, same maps, shit like that same in both versions. All yeah. the new characters They're going to add them to Overwatch, Overwatch yeah. 1. It's, it's insane to me that that's... Because here's the thing. Let's, let's be real. At this point in time, Overwatch has its audience. Much the same way Anthem has its audience. Destiny has its audience. And like Destiny plays to that audience. Oh, yeah. That's why you have seasonal things that come with like bare bones content, but it has a, enough microtransactions added to the fucking game that they can have an entire article about it, right? Yeah. All of these games have found their audience. It's like No Man's Sky. I was like thinking earlier, I was like, honestly, dude, hats a hat tip to Sean Murray and Hello Games. 
legitimately. All bullshit aside, like a hat tip to them because they have their audience. Mm -hmm. They have their player base. I think it's like 100,000 people the other day I saw was playing it on Steam. Just on Steam. Then they have the, the player base on consoles where they're on, they're, I don't know if they're on the Switch yet, but they're on Xbox, they're on PlayStation. They have the audience. They could put in some microtransactions. 100%. And at this point in time, I don't think I would even care. Like, I wouldn't make a video about it, bashing them, blah, 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 blah. Because to me, it's old news. But honestly, at this point in the game, they have they have got their audience. Oh, yeah. The people who like that gameplay, who like the additions that they've continually added to the game for free, they have their audience. And they themselves have not added any superfluous fucking microtransactions or loot box cosmetics or anything like that so i fucking consider hat tip to them oh yeah but i was trailing into that when thinking on this because a hat tip to blizzard as well because here's the thing overwatch has its audience most of those people are hooked on the feeling of not only doing well in a match but showing off their latest skins showing off all these cosmetic items to their friends to other players on the other team the sprays the fucking victory poses, the like play of the game poses. Like there's a whole plethora of fucking things in these loot boxes, right? And they have their audience. And let's face it, if Blizzard said, okay, Overwatch 2 will have new game modes, completely new characters, or fuck, they could even rework the existing characters visually and play style wise and bring them back. Oh, yeah. Just have a different spin on each of them like Destiny did with the classes. But that's the thing, like, they have their audience. They could do this. They could say, okay, you want to get into Overwatch 2? Well, we're resetting your progress. Yep. So we're squashing your investment down to $0. sixty, please. Yeah, and they could just let Overwatch 1 fall by the wayside, <laughs> let everyone's commitment monetarily and, like, time-wise that they put into that game, they could just throw that to the wayside and resell people all the shit that they already own. Yep. Let's face it, and I'm not saying that it's dumb of the Overwatch community would put up with this, but I know there's a huge section of the Overwatch community that would be fine with it because they just love the game so much they want more. Right? That's it. They don't care. They just want more of the game. They don't care if it's a sequel. They don't care if it's... A, a, this is the thing. Remember when you brought this up, I had completely fucking forgotten about this, but when we were talking about this... We, we, we were reading an article and Jeff Kaplan was saying, like, we just want to do a good job. We don't have any release date yet, but just let us do a good job. And Chubbs was like, he's the fucking guy who said that if they had to make a PV, P, PVE mode, it would have to be a whole new game. Yeah, it wouldn't be an addition to Overwatch 1. So that's what they've done. But they're, they're putting it into the same thing. And another hat tip to Blizzard, right? No season pass. The fucking... The loot boxes have definitely, in this case, right? Because a lot of these companies claim we have these extra things, these extra shit for sale, and it's going to fund more content to you people. Most of these companies say that, but then the only content that gets funded is more microtransactions. Yeah. And everything else you got to buy, right? And even the microtransactions you got to buy, right? So it's like, they, they, like Bungie, I mean, I hate to use Bungie as an example, but God damn it, if they're not the fucking perfect one. And I know we talk, I bring them up all the well, time. Well, it's because they're the perfect example of they what are. not to do in they the are. industry. You piss on your audience, you release shallow, broken, buggy games, you shatter your story to fit the content release that an entirely other team worked on. And then when Destiny 2 comes out, you have the balls to have a documentary stating, when we worked on Destiny 1, we didn't know who this was going to be intended for. It's like, of course you didn't, dumb fuck. You weren't even there when they were creating They did, though. Here's the thing. They did. I don't know when, at what point this happened, but Destiny shifted gears into a fucking uh, psychologically driven experiment. Oh, yeah. And here's what it was about. This is why I would say all of the things, like, planned obsolescence. That's a thing. That right. sounds right in my brain, but I don't know if it's right now that I say it out loud. But what I'm saying is, is they had like this week release where purples would drop blues and legendary engrams or exotic engrams could drop purples. And it was like this loot system that was really not that great. And then it incrementally got better up until the point of Taking King, which I don't think it's gotten any better since Taking King. 
I don't think they've done anything different. Sure, they've added these artifacts, but those are just tied to these seasonal price tags. You know what I mean? That you gotta buy in order to experiment, experience the new season of content, right? So like, from that point though, like the open world hasn't changed. It's fetch quests, it's kill quests, it's hit targets. It's like the same thing, it's just they've built upon it and made it more. And then they have like these in zone sort of little end game activities and things. But overall, the game hasn't changed. You have, and these guardians that like will piss on anyone's opinion if it's not Bungie great, they have repeatedly handed this mo company money under these, uh, for the microtractions under this lie that Bungie put forth. That this is going to fund the live team. This is going to bring you guys free content. And the free content is like events with special loot boxes, right? And that's the thing about Overwatch with a hat tip to them. They could have fucking done that. Oh, yeah. They could have, when they released characters, they could have sold them for five, ten bucks a pop. Mm -hmm. Right? But they knew that with the new character, they give that out for free. People will, if they enjoy the character, they play the character a lot. They're more likely to put money into your randomized loot box to get a chance at a skin for, for that character. Yeah. It's going to end up making them more. Yeah. Because instead of it being a one flat price, like 15 bucks for the character and all its skins, it's now five bucks for a loot box, five bucks for another loot box. And you don't know if you're going to get what you want out of it, right? Yeah. But that's the thing. And I know people that played the game, I'm sure there's people who have never spent money on the, the thing and they've unlocked tons of stuff right and i think that's because they have different drop rates i think the more you buy in those probably the less likely you're going to get anything super i think what they're doing there is there's some manipulation going on with the loot drops kind of like the mobile phone mechanic yeah. where if you don't spend any money on their little currency they're giving you more yeah well they give deals. you yeah they give you cells that aren't available to the guy who's buying it every constantly week. yeah and like that's for sure happening on the mobile and you find out that gear that uh activision blizzard was pulled into congress or some such thing I don't have all the details right now. I read about this a very long time ago. But essentially, it was it was basically revealed that they were giving influencers, YouTubers, better drop rates on loot box because then they'd stream it or they'd put a video up on YouTube, people would watch it, they'd be like, "Man, look at all the good shit this guy's getting." I gotta, I gotta play the lotto right now, you know? Like, that the lotto old, is rolling hot. That old monkey at the slot machine That's trick. Yeah, exactly, <laughs> and it's brilliant. And it's <laughs> it's depressing that it works, but at the same time, I can't fault the company for taking advantage of the fucking monkey. Yeah. Like, I'm sorry, I can't. Like, if the chimp is you willing can... to pull the fucking lever over and over and over again at five bucks a pop, you know, and it's the, the chimp, no one's forcing the chimp to hand over money. Right? Yeah, they're doing these things, but in in the case of uh, Overwatch, the reason I give a hat tip is because they have that audience. Oh, yeah. They have those people that are locked in to, into this game. Who are in it. And they, they, they will buy these loot boxes. They will spend 100 bucks a paycheck into these things. Mm -hmm. And they could say, fuck you, your investment. Fuck your previous time investment. Fuck your monetary investment. We're letting, we're scrapping everything. Yep. You want to play Overwatch 2? Any of the new characters, you're going to have to buy Overwatch 2. Yep. But instead, they're like, yo, you want to play these new characters that are coming out in Overwatch 2? Well, you're not going to have access to the PvE stuff or these hero missions that sound cool. Like, in my mind, that, that alone is like what I wanted out of Battleborn. I wanted like, since there was 25 and I think 30 currently, but since there were so many characters i wanted a mission per character right they introduced said character let you play as said character use those abilities in unique interesting ways throughout the environment and it like sets it up to be that way in the beginning with melka it's like use your spike to jump and use your i can't remember what it is but the other ability that throws her forward to reach higher ledges and when i was doing that when i first played it i remember thinking like awesome what if there's like i remember telling you this coming to this i bet i was like i bet you there's gonna be a mission with like benedict and it's gonna be like crazy platforming and flying because we had played the beta and the technical test so we had played around with a lot of these characters and my imagination at that point just having that move with melka 
Like that got my imagination going to the point where I was like, this is what I want. I want like, and it, it was so disappointing playing through Battleborn's story and seeing what it boiled down to. And if Overwatch, these hero missions, is it going to be like each character has a hero mission and like the hero mission, it says there's a heavy emphasis on replayability. So like, is it going to be Left 4 Dead-esque and Vermintide-ish where it's not the same mob placements, it's not the same mobs that you're facing every time, plus, there's some randomization to it. Plus there's all that extra stuff to do yeah, in the area. Yeah, where they add like modifiers to your abilities and right. things like that. Like different stuff, like 100% completion would be like hero missions, you know, you want to get 100%, they would probably have like some hidden secrets, collectibles or something. Yeah, you something. To, I mean? Well, they said there's pickups too for the multiplayer ones. They give you abilities and different things. Like Is there's he? one that's like a straight up bubble, like Winston's, but anyone can have it. Right. So it's like it looks like they're taking the time to put a spin on this, and I really hope that it delivers where Battleborn couldn't. Right. Where I think Agents of Mayhem delivered. Right. Where Agents of Mayhem gave me a cast of characters that all had different abilities and supers. And, and they all had their yeah. own unique story within that the grander, them, yeah. you know, within the grander narrative of the overall they had story. Some very stylized, like comic book style cutscenes mm -hmm. that I really loved. Really slick, gorgeous looking animation, bright, colorful game. Right. And it was like that's what Battleborn was to me, but Battleborn just fell so short. Oh yeah. And ever since that moment, using Melka to transcend, like this reached the higher oh, yeah. point on the map ever since then i've been obsessed with this idea and overwatch the reason why overwatch i i played that after i had played battleborn so there was no way i was gonna pick up overwatch like no offense there's just it just wasn't gonna happen right i liked battleborn so much more i got only so much money and only so much time battleborn was the game for me that time around Right. But if Overwatch comes out with a story mode, like Blizzard drops a story mode reminiscent of a Battleborn in my imagination, what I wanted it to be, where it's like you play Lucio this match and like you get to learn more about Lucio, who he is as a character and a hero and part of Overwatch. Right. And this time you can play as Tracer and this time you can play as Winston and we're going to reveal things about these characters and maybe there's like you said like completion get a certain percentage of collectibles or something and then you get more story right right like kind of like akin to the lore challenges in battleborn which were really fun to do once you got the story and it filled out those characters and gave them a little bit more depth it was just the narrative throughout the campaign it was and, very disappointing and, with and battleborn i hate this idea of like with overwatch where all these new store like the way they've delivered story in overwatch has been through cutscenes that they upload to youtube mm -hmm. and it's like look like why are you making me leave your game to get the story of your game like that's destiny's biggest problem too go read your grimoire card on your mobile application Right. And we all know that this is just a tricky way to keep retention high, right? Because people are at work, looking at their phones, seeing what their friends have gotten, looking at their phones, seeing what activities they did and what their percentage was in the fucking thing, you know, what items their friends got. All these things that you can look up and look at on this application and it makes you excited about it. And the second you get home, you're getting into it. Yep. You want to play it now. Because, mm -hmm. you know, your friend did that activity. You got to catch up. You don't want to get left behind. He got a uh, exotic whatever the fuck you want. <laughs> yep. And Destiny is the perfect example of that. Let's make them so that they don't want to get left behind mentality. Mm -hmm. Like, I mean, it's all about, like, current content. It's all about current activities. Like, everything in the, ba in the past is in the past. Don't even look in the fucking rear view. Yep. It's all about go, go, go that way. And if you're not going that way, you're going to get left behind and all your friends are going to laugh at you and you're not going to have any of these cool exotics or artifacts. And then or... like, what's the point of even playing our game? <laughs> <laughs> anyway, I, I want to do a video on this real quick because when I get on Twitter and I see posts about Overwatch 2, I see a bunch of fucking entitled little babies crying about how this is just a this is just an expansion. And I think in my mind, like, hold on, I should be that guy. I mean, I was that guy. I said it's ridiculous that they said a PVE content pack 
would be have to be considered an expansion but i'm looking at it like this too as someone who didn't buy overwatch one who doesn't have any monetary investment in the game i'm interested in overwatch 2 because if i pick up overwatch 2 having not picked up overwatch 1 i'm still going to be able to play with everyone who plays overwatch 1 yep i'm still going to be able to unlock all the things for all the characters that are in overwatch it's not 1. splitting the player base it's at not all. yeah it's not taking all these people's time and investment and telling them that they got to move on it's time to move on. Your friends are going to leave you behind if you don't move on. Mm -hmm. All this is pointless now. Let it go. Let it go. All the time you spend in it, let it go. Quit playing it. It's like World of Warcraft with their artifact weapons during Legion. They make this intensive grind that's like super hard. And, and like some takes of the... for days to get those weapons maxed out. And then they just fucking make them null and void. The yeah. next expansion. And it's because the next expansion, they were so OP and <coughs> intricate with the building that people were taking advantage of them to wipe the raids. It's like, okay. <laughs> you could have just balanced them. I don't know. Yeah, you could have just nerfed the fuck out of them. But they just got them. rid of them and... And they added, and then, and you, then they and changed no it into a neck piece. And it's like, you never, really, you want me to do this again? Only this time it's a necklace instead of a weapon. And I know that the second you want to sell me more shit, this necklace is going to be worthless. Yeah, it's going to be something else. So uh -huh. what? what is my point in investing time in Warcraft? And that's how WoW has felt to me for years. And I think when it finally clicked was I had been grinding fucking arenas twos with crumb and fucking rain dude and we were we were and you i did some with you too and we were running these two two v2s and i think we did three v3s with rain and chris at a certain point but we're doing these fucking all that that season right that that pvp season and i got the best pvp year you could have i'd roll up in a battleground as a holy paladin and you couldn't fuck with me like i couldn't kill you but you are not going to kill me or anyone that's in my cast range. It's not going to happen. That You will not kill us. We, I, that's how good my gear was. Right. And it was so fun. And then they released a new season. And all that gear was pointless. It was crap. Yep. The, the gear score went up. All that gear, I went into a battleground just curious to see if I could still compete. And I hadn't done PvP for a minute because of this reason. And I went into the battleground. I got fucking squashed. I got rolled and I was like, so it's not even about my skill. It's about my stats and my stats are tied to this weekly thing where I can only get this much this week until next week. And the next week I can get this much more and you do the math and you're like, okay, so I got to get this much honor points. And the big thing, the big boosts where you get the bunch, you can only do a couple few times a week. Other than that, you're grinding it out like a free to play game, like yep. a free to play currency. And it's, it's, you do the math in your head and you're like, oh, I get it. It's because Blizzard wants me to play it for two months. He wants you to play it for indefinitely. They, yeah, until there's like a month left on this season. They want, if, if I do it every day. Yeah. You know, and that's going to be two months and that's a $30 for them. Because that's 15 bucks a month. So that's 30 more dollars. And that's been their fucking design philosophy from day one. And that's the only fucking thing Luke Smith takes from fucking Destiny. He doesn't from take... World of yeah, from World of Warcraft and puts in Destiny. He doesn't take any of the intricacies of the map, the world building, the stories, the dungeons, the interconnected feeling of all the lore. The depth of role-playing characters yeah. where you actually have an in-depth skill tree yeah. and role based off of your clash not just class yeah but, but that's gone now specialization. that's gone now it's still every there. yeah it's still there but every class every plays class essentially the same. the same but i mean you have still, a generator and a spender but generator still, and a spender we're talking back about and forth different generations when we talk about yeah, luke smith who plays right. world of warcraft yeah. he's like i got the blood he's playing in vanilla where aq40 yeah, the black that's when, bug mount that's and, when you'd be happy be at your most you'd have to know what the fuck your class does yes if you don't know what your class does you're not playing that game very long and that's the that's what's really shameful about him is he takes all these things from the world of warcraft that are just there meant to bleed the character player's time mm -hmm. to bleed the player's time and he puts them all in that game without any of the the you know like factions having there be an actual story and philosophy behind the factions and having there be a choice of which faction you'll join and a consequence on which faction you didn't join on this character, right? Like, who would, how cool would it have been if Dead Orbit, New Monarchy, and Future War Cult, you had to pick one. Right. And that was it. And you were aligned with them on that character indefinitely. 
unless you fucking like broke it off in some way and then have there be a super big penalty for that i don't know what but fucking there's no choice it's you equip this and now you're this faction yeah and you you will get reputation for this faction you won't know what the fucking point of it is you're gonna get unique faction rewards that are the same as the other faction rewards they just have different skins and it's like that's the thing about that's ultimately why i wanted to make this video is because you have these people bashing this game bashing this game this is a fucking company that supports the fucking oppressors in hong kong this is a company that fucking releases expansions and calls them sequels this is like a fucking this isn't even a you know and it's like look you it's the fucking thing is is overwatch isn't really a conventional game to begin with no all right in my opinion it almost didn't even deserve a starting asking price yeah with its microtransaction loot boxes and the popularity of its it's you know that that game has made them a huge chunk of change at this point in time off, oh, of, yeah. off of off of a couple of game modes and then they said no to the season pass hot tip there and they gave people new game modes new characters of course these new characters come with skins but that's that's the caveat that's still like no season pass they and they know their audience they yeah. have their audience they've done their fishing that's what these games do they throw a net out day one and whoever stays those are their fish and those fish will usually put up with quite a fucking lot as we've seen in destiny's case oh, yeah. with the brainwashed chimps over no. there who come down to my channel and say that borderlands was able to do what they did because of their deem their deal with amd and their deal with epic <laughs> really what about fucking destiny's deal with fucking sony what about destiny's deal with fucking all the, the nvidia or whoever the fuck they did a deal with when they moved their fucking game to pc right these idiots are brainwashed they have been fished out of the, the sea of dumb fucks, and they are now hooked onto this game, hooked onto this grind, hooked onto these microtransactions, right? There's entire articles about nothing but Everest fucking updates. About the fucking... That is ridiculous. Entire funny. articles. I, th I thought it was ludicrous when they would do it with Overwatch and Fortnite. There's a, yeah, and they, they do it. Like, they, they do it. Look, here's an entire article on what you can and buy. And it's either... It's one of two things. Either the company is giving them special treatment, early access, you know, it, it, special back scenery, things like products. Here's some fucking Destiny statues. Here's some Overwatch merch. Who knows what they're doing? It's either that... Or these games are just so popular and being played by so many people that there is a huge interest in knowing what the new microtransactions are for sale. Yeah. What are the new loot boxes? What's in these new holiday loot boxes? Tell me. I'm interested. What are the new cosmetics that I can buy? <laughs> and so in a, in a world where the audience that overblows a company to the point where every goddamn product coming from that company now is going to have skins... This same group of people are now going to turn on it and attack it and cannibalize it. It's interesting for me to see. Oh, yeah. As someone who's like, wow, like that, that was well, up. And that's oh, yeah. the thing. Like, I don't even care. Like I said, like hat tip to Hello Games, hat tip to Overwatch. Because in my eyes, that's how you do business. Right. Like, regardless of the shit with Sean Murray in the past and what he said about a game, what he didn't say about a game, what he did or didn't do. He, at this point in time, he hasn't put microtransactions in it. And I don't think anyone would care if they did. No. <laughs> so there's got to be a reason why he hasn't. And it's not because fucking he, he thinks that he's going to face blowback or anything like that. I really truly don't think it's that. Maybe he's saving the last scrap the of integrity Yeah, but here's, for the that thing about, here's the thing about Hello Games <laughs> and No Man's Sky. The online narrative behind that game and that company has completely changed. When that first happened, the, I, I mean, I contributed to this narrative of the fuck them, fuck them. And, you know, honestly, I still stand behind that. With the product they shipped at $60, fuck them for that. Right? Fuck them for that. Yeah. The mismarketing, the, the fucking... The lies. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I, I still feel like fuck them. But at this point, I'm gone. Most people are gone. We're done. Yeah. We don't care anymore. And the people that have stayed, those are his audience. And Hello Games and Sean Murray could fucking take advantage of them. When you look at Bungie and Destiny, 
the narrative of them is this is a good game it's different now that overwatch came out the latest expansion fixed all the problems from the last that's been the ongoing narrative from fucking taking king beyond right it's activision's fault they've made everything better with this latest expansion they've sold us for 40 dollars. blah 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 right and that's the narrative with hello games it's like it's dope that they can and i fucking support it the narrative like it's true it is cool as fuck that they have continued to deliver content to that game for its audience and made those people's monetary investment and time investment worth it by building on the sandcastle that was so damaged in the beginning right right but building it up smoothing it out to the point now where there you're going to be able to alter terrain and in a way and like it's it's getting to fall out four style with mods right right where it's insane in the amount of fucking variety of things you can do and fall out for with the building with mods installed right and so like it's it's reaching that point and there's no reason why he shouldn't put microtransactions in it at this point they've continually worked on the game stuck with the game and in my eyes they deserve it because they've not stuck with the game to milk a complacent fucking audience to milk an audience that's there defending bad move after bad move where it's they haven't been it it would be like if they were selling expansions for fucking 60 dollars yeah and the audience was like yes i'll take it and then they added loot boxes and they're like this is gonna bring you free content yes i'll I'll, buy them i'll buy them they'll they'll bring me free content at the price of a hundred dollars per paycheck that i'm gonna fork fork over to this company it's like they could do that and they don't oh yeah and that's what i think we need to look at when we, as an online gaming community, decide that outrage is in, it's time for fucking outrage, we need to stop, breathe deep, and look at it from every side, right? From every side, fuck Bungie! Oh yeah! If, from every side, fuck Destiny! If it's fucked, it's fucked. Yes. But if you're just looking for flaws to be a bitch, yeah. then you're and that's what happens like if you cannot obviously appreciate something good that comes along for what it is and especially for what it stands for in this day and age yeah like fuck you yeah but you're gonna you know nine out of ten for fucking death stranding with a quote that says it's boring to play sometimes (laughs) yeah okay this is the world we're living in well, they give they give every expansion that Destiny drops a glowing review. Oh yeah. They write entire articles about where Zer is. It's like you need to know when something is egregiously fucked up to the point where okay, my outrage here is justified. Like if Overwatch Two was coming out and they said it's going to have all the same characters, but we've slightly tweaked them. They're going to have different abilities, and we've added a ledge grab. Yeah. 60 bucks oh and by the way the skins you don't just get the skin now you get the head piece the chest piece the arm piece the leg piece and once you equip it it's gone yep so hold on to the, if you like the way that looks oh. that head piece looks don't unequip it and you have a limited amount of space for cosmetics in your fucking yeah. bag <laughs> yeah <laughs> Like, that's uh, when you say fuck Blizzard. Like, that's the thing with me. This is my final point on Overwatch is the thing with uh, Bungie and how we've been bringing them up a lot in this video and in the past. And the reason why we bring it up in this video is because the first thing I thought of when you were telling me people were bitching about Overwatch 2 is I was like, of course. They're dumb. They want to buy it all again like Destiny 2. <laughs> they because, want them to resell every character yeah, slightly tweaked. Think about Destiny 2. Like, if you, all of the content from Destiny 1 was in Destiny 2. All of the content. I'm not talking about selling the moon later and then adding heavy weapons later. I'm talking about launching with all of the content from Destiny 1. With... The base yeah. game of Destiny with 2. With all of your shaders, with all of your You exotics. raise the level cap in the game. Like, you don't devalue any investment that people yeah. has put into Destiny 1. If you carry it over into Destiny 2, uh, when that launches and me and you beat it in 12 hours, but guess what? It's got everything in Destiny 1 in it. We're recommending it. Yeah. We are way more appreciative of Destiny yeah. 2 at that I'm point. I'm saying, th- here's the thing. Like, they let me keep all my exotics. 
I have all my exotics from Destiny oh, 1. Yeah. I have all my shaders from Destiny 1. I have the class specializations from Destiny but, 1, but they added a new two. But that's the thing. <laughs> it's like... This is, this is part of the fishing, though, bro. Because at that point in time when they did that, there's a huge audience in Destiny 1 that said, no, fuck you, I'm not buying your game again. I'm not going to buy your season pass. I'm not going to buy your $40 expansion after that. Your $40 expansion after that. And all of these fucking seasonal events and uh, season passes on top of season passes on top of season passes. I'm not doing it. But they didn't care. Because guess what? There's a lot of people who did. Mm -hmm. Then they give it away for free on Sony. And people who've never played Destiny at all are now picking it up and getting into it. Ooh, more fish. Then they move it from fucking Activision's uh, Blizzard launcher to Steam and give it away for free. Except for the new stuff, which is the only relevant content worth Which playing. is like 50 bucks. Yeah, but that's what they do. What is it? What is it? It's each time they make a move like that, it's dipping the fucking net back in the ocean to yep. catch the dumbest possible fish they can. Yep. That's what it is. Uh, and yeah. Overwatch could do that. They could. But they have constantly respected their audience. Right? They've constantly added free characters, new modes, seasonal events, sure. But they're the same season they sh that come with exclusive loot box skins, sure. But they they're fucking there. And they're not part of a season pass. They don't have an extra expansion afterwards. No. Nope. Right? Mm -hmm. And if this is the only expansion that you have to buy, and it's an entire sequel that adds new characters, new game modes, and a complete PvE mode to the game with these hero campaigns and this other stuff that is going to fill out the story, it's like, that's not the company you bitch at. No. So hot tip to fucking Blizzard, in my oh, opinion. Yeah. On this move, hot tip. Oh, yeah. Fuck you on the goddamn skins in Warcraft 3, you cunts. Yeah, Reforge. Keep that shit out of my fucking and putting product. putting an emphasis on the multiplayer. Like, they're going to do what they did you with StarCraft You stuff as many of those fucking things you want into Overwatch. You stuff as many fucking of those things as you want in World of Warcraft. But can we not have one property that isn't corrupted? Can we not have Diablo and fucking Warcraft fucking 3 Reforged? Like, Diablo 4. Like, I, as we as fans. I guarantee you they're going to do some sort of variant of that they did in StarCraft 2. <laughs> now, look, I know I'm just a boomer. But back in my fucking day, games were pure. They were about buying a one-time experience that would you would not be hindered throughout the playthrough. It wasn't about live service and updates and DLC packs and expansions and skins and loot boxes. It was just a simple, you buy this game, and everything in this fucking game, you get. And I, I would really appreciate it if you would acknowledge the fact that we're not all fucking dead yet, Blizzard. We're not all fucking dead. There's still some people who grew up with stars in our eyes when we played your fucking game. And I know you're not the company that you were when I was young, but please, this is a cry out from one of your fucking fans. Like, stop fucking doing this you got your properties where it works and it works in overwatch and you can make money there off of that audience right because those are your new generation of fans i promise you your older generations of fans that are that come up on warcraft starcraft starcraft diablo like your fucking og franchises we are not playing overwatch and if we are we're not spending money on the loot boxes right like people are looking at that as an element of gameplay to unlock things the same way i do in battleborn when i unlock skins in that right right from doing the daily quests and getting that platinum and finally being able to buy one right i'm not giving them money for that shit no there's people who are 100 percent playing overwatch and unlocking those things and view it as a sort of progression and they enjoy the core gameplay right so that's where you put it don't put that shit... Why do you need fucking skins for Warcraft 3? In a remaster. Exclusive pre-order skins. Like, first of all, you're remastering an old game, which is like, alright. I probably would have fucking pre-ordered your game until you added exclusive pre-order skins. I'm just throwing that yeah. out there. 
Like, you remastered the game, which immediately brings about, like, a thought of laziness, but they didn't just remaster it. It's, it's they a more of a remake. It. It's yeah. a remake, they less than a remaster. They recreated it from the ground up, and it's like, oh, okay, cool. And then you go to their website, and it's like, on or before December 2019. I would rather them <laughs> sell me the fucking first game and then the Frozen Throne for another $60 than put exclusive skins behind a pre-order. Yeah. <laughs> I would genuinely rather spend $120 than be insulted. And say, we need you to give us money before we have a concrete release date, or else you're gonna have a skin, you're not gonna have a skin for Thrall. It'll be there. Like you'll be able to see it. Like make no mistakes. It'll be there. It'll just be locked off. Yeah. There'll be one for Arthas. You're not gonna be able to use it. It's yeah. gonna be locked off. <laughs> it's so dumb. It's like these are my favorite characters, dude. Fuck you. Yeah. Fuck you. These are some of my favorite characters in fiction. Fuck you! Anyway, those are our thoughts on Overwatch. <laughs> yeah. You fucking assholes are over there going to cry because they're letting you keep progress and not wiping your monetary and time investment in the game. Yeah, they're telling you, look, the first game was all PvP. So PvE, if that's not your cup of tea, don't fucking buy it. You'll get everything that the sequel has to offer for you in the PvP. And people are going to bitch and complain and be like, oh, it's just an expansion. Well, it's a great point that Uncompetitive brought up, and I'm going to leave it there. I'm paraphrasing here. He put it much more eloquently. But he says, maybe if people didn't scream and cry about every little fucking thing, then things that mattered would actually change. Yes. That's paraphrased, but that's essentially what he said. And it's a good goddamn statement. And that's why we wanted to do this video on Overwatch. Because this isn't something that I feel people should be bitching about. At all. This is a solid move from a company that has been completely uncool, in my opinion, for many years. Right? You want to bitch about something Blizzard's doing, bitch about the skins they're putting in the game that didn't need them. Yeah. But it's online competitive. People like to show off skins. Yep. We know that now. Ugh. <laughs> Anyway, that's it for me, Jax. Chubs. You got anything else you want to say? Nah. I'm good. I don't believe you. I We're good. People say I fucking talk too much and I drown you out. I, they, we, they, I I'm pretty, an asshole. I pretty much covered all my thoughts on this. Like, seriously, the fucking brainwashed chimps who want to wipe their investment back to zero. Well, guess what? <laughs> that's not going to happen. But it doesn't matter. People are going to bitch and complain, but they're complacent anyway. Does anybody remember Shadergate? No. Uh, like nobody cares they added they, it they're they added still it. selling they, that listen, shit listen though here's like, the thing they know? added a collection book now and once you've unlocked a shader i don't i don't give a fuck you can get it That's after the... you've gotten one currency and turned it into another currency and then unlocked the currency I don't give a fuck. in order to unlock the there are skin. so many things that happen <laughs> with phones. all these dude there's so many things that happen with all of these modern games that like piss me off and then like i see an outrage culture for them and i'm like okay good they're complaining about something that should be complained about but then like everybody's complacent anyway and they're still fucking making enough money to justify the fucking existence of this shit to begin with so at the end of the day it doesn't matter that's how i feel <laughs> that's how i feel too it doesn't matter like the way i look at it is it's something now that's just going to eke into every product and it, it's like that's why i thank god for gearbox thank god for borderlands 3 dude yeah for not doing yeah not doing like it that. you know <laughs> there's a free dlc pack for borderlands 2 it's like they hyped me up and they hyped me up by being it's like by being cool. play. it's yeah. like a chick fucking i'm gonna suck your dick <laughs> and then you get a fuck me instead of touching you yeah. and like 20 bucks yeah dude like a lap dance in a strip club that doesn't allow nudity <laughs> right unless you for gearbox is like dollars we got you we're sending the stripper to your fucking house she's gonna suck your dick then you get a fucker and she's not going to be a bitch about it she's gonna act like she cares and it's like whoa thank god for gearbox <laughs> thank god for all you we love you keep being awesome stay safe thanks for watching all the way through till next time Keep kicking ass.